Hey everybody. So recently I got the OnePlus 12 after getting way too annoyed with slow charging and not so great battery life with the S23 that I was using for more than a year and it was much better before. And I got this OnePlus 12 for almost 12000 after exchanging my 10 month old iPhone 13 and a video on that will be coming out soon on the channel. So subscribe if you haven't already. Now coming to this OnePlus 12 and I got the green color here because the other two were out of stock at that time. And I combined the exchange as well as the card offer by purchasing it from the OnePlus store with the flexi exchange option and got almost 39000 for the iPhone which I think is a really good price. Plus I also got 7000 extra as a card offer because you will get the extra bump up amount as a return in the source card and the device value instantly. So that's how the flexi exchange process works. And I'll leave a link to buy the device in the description area and you can use that and help the channel out. Now let's talk about the five main things to look out before you buy this device. First, the build quality or hardware. Second, software and updates. Third is the camera quality. Fourth, performance and battery and fifth, the cons and conclusion. So I won't focus much on the unboxing or specs and you do get everything in the box from the 100 watt quick charger to a glossy screen protector pre-applied. But it gets scratches way too quickly and that's why I got this another film type protector thanks to Gadget Shields. And you'll not be able to find a good tempered glass easily for this one and the device is already very bulky. Anyways, this is a matte screen protector plus you can also get a camera lens protector too. So I got everything I needed in the package itself and you can make mistakes with this one as it gets applied with this liquid and won't damage your phone unlike UV based protectors. So enough said, I made some mistakes and still this is the end result. And I love the matte finish on my display because the screen picks up less fingerprints and looks cool too. And if you don't like the back color of your device, then you can use a skin and make it look minimal because the back here is way too slippery. So a case which I got free from OnePlus or a skin is must have in my opinion. And I have these two skins here, but the wooden one is my favorite. and i'll leave the links to buy both of these just below the like button so you can use that and the promo code for extra 15% off on your order coming back to the first aspect that is the build quality and hardware so from the outside like every other flagship there is this glass and metal construction and the design is quite unique here the back on this variant especially looks quite different and it's really really slippery but it doesn't catch up the fingerprints at all and you can try and try and it'll still look like new The camera housing is also really huge, something I'm not a big fan of, but it looks unique like a proper OnePlus flagship in 2024. And they've been using this design for years now, and it seems like this one is most refined of them all. The frame here is metallic and we also get the IR blaster on the top. Rest, you do get an alert slider and a USB 3.1 type C charging port on the bottom with stereo speakers and the buttons are on the right side. Though I wish the volume rocker was on the left side. And the display here is a 6.8 inch 120 hertz dynamic LTPO AMOLED with a center punch hole that is a bit bigger than usual devices in this price range which by the way has a Gorilla Glass Victus 2 protection and has a peak brightness of 4500 nits and a high brightness of 1600 nits which makes the visibility good outdoors on a sunny day and by default it is not set to max resolution and i also changed the color profile a bit the bezels here are also really thin and the display is curved from all edges something you may or may not like the device weighs almost 220 grams in hand and the weight distribution is done well here the device does feel a bit bulky if you apply a case on the top overall in build quality i would give it 8 out of 10 because it takes all the basics for a big size flagship device now coming to the software side of things and here things get a little sad see if this device was having stock android or even the classic oneplus oxygen os that we had before then this device would have sold like crazy because it would have been a good alternative to the Pixel series of devices. The device is running on Oxygen OS 14 based on Android 14, which is now pretty much totally color OS and there is no Oxygen left here. And OnePlus also made some really false promises in the past and all they wanted was to do this, which all of us raised multiple times too. But nothing happened and the good thing here is that there is still no bloatware or ads here, especially in flagships. But they've ruined the budget line though. And overall the software is really well polished and has a ton of features built in which will be mostly appreciated by someone who hasn't used a OnePlus device in past. And I think OnePlus is targeting that user base only for now. 
and in some places the UI is really inspired by iOS. For example, have a look at this notification center. In terms of features, you get everything here, like an app locker to auto call recording with O dialer from OnePlus, to some AI features too, like the AI Razor summary tool and a few more. And they aren't something that new, but a variation of what Samsung and Google offers. Overall, the software and animation specially are very well optimized now, and you can see how smooth they are in day-to-day -day usage, which is something missing even from One UI on S23. You can customize everything here, from lock screen shortcuts to icons and transitions. But with all the system apps and privacy policy asking my permission to share the data, it doesn't bring the most confidence out of me while using this device. The haptics here are superb and probably one of the best in market right now. The O haptics does make a big impact on the overall haptic feedback and you will love the subtle places where it is implemented, like in the volume toggle and brightness slider. Overall, if you are okay with this new Oxeno skin and having not so many AI features, so you might even end up liking it. And personally, I have mixed feelings about it, but it works really well, so I don't have much complaints here. Also, it will get four major updates, which is a great thing. So you are covered till Android 18, and it will get five years of security patches too. And OnePlus does give timely updates here still, like it got the July update recently, and it is mostly up to date. And you can trust OnePlus with the consistent, if not the quickest updates here. Now if I talk about the battery life here, it has a big 5400mAh battery with 100W wired and 50W of wireless charging. And this device charges even wirelessly faster than most of the devices with fast wired charging. It takes up around 30 minutes and 50 minutes with the 50W Airhook charger that I have here. And if you can increase the charging speed to maximum by turning off the smart rapid charging toggle, which might heat up the device a bit but the device will take around 25 minutes to fully charge, which can be very useful at times when you need to top up quickly. But by this much fast charging, it will definitely reduce the battery health quicker in the long term. So my suggestion would be to keep the charging speed to average to save the battery health at least. The screen on time can vary from 6.5 to even 8 to 9 hours depending upon the usage. But it is totally a one day device and you might not even have to charge it for like 24 hours or so and you will end up your day with approximately 20% juice left. In terms of battery, it is really a champion and I have no complaints in this arena. The performance too is not an issue for this device as it runs on Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 with 12GB of RAM and 256GB of base storage. And the phone just blazes through everything you throw at it. I have 200 plus apps on my device and like 50 of them are in the background right now and I face zero issues with the fluidity here. No dropped frames. And the gaming experience here is also smooth. I tried BGMI and COD with maximum graphics settings and the device is not heating up that much. Though I am not much of a gamer, but it can handle anything you have in mind. And I think the base variant is enough for most users, unless you really want to flaunt the sheer RAM and storage on your device. Talking about the camera here, and we have three cameras on the back, a normal ultra wide and a third one which is a periscope camera that can zoom up to 120 times. On the front, we have a 32 megapixel shooter, which is the same sensor that we have on the Nothing Phone 2A. So, not the best choice on paper. But let's check out the photos now, shall we? So, here are some image samples from the primary back camera. And as you can see in the sample images, they're mostly good with sharp colors and they have a good dynamic range most of the times. I compared this device with S23 and iPhone 13. And if you want a video on that, then do let me know in the comment section down below. Something I don't like is the color boosting that it does sometimes just to make the images look a bit more punchy. The skin tones here are pretty natural but with somewhat skin smoothing still. And the images taken from all three sensors are good and I really like the images taken in portrait mode as well. The edge detection is pretty much on point with consistent results and you can adjust the depth of field later in the photos application. Also here are the images shot from the ultra wide angle camera. And you can see the overall output is good, but it can be a hit or miss sometimes. And I would say the images are good, but you guys be the judge and let me know what you feel about it. And here are the images shot from the front facing camera, which I feel is decent, but nothing great for that price. I feel they could have used a better sensor here, and that would have made a lot of difference. Also here is a video sample just to give you guys an idea about the video quality, so that you can have an idea about the stabilization and the overall video output which can go up to 8K at max from the back camera 
and from the front facing camera you can take videos up to 4K 30fps. Overall camera is quite good for the price and especially the back camera and the periscope zoom is something you will have fun with and you can take close up shots of far objects without any issues. Lastly if I talk about the cons then first of all I feel like the software here could have been a bit cleaner and somewhat stock to close android and the number of updates here could have been more as compared to samsung or google as in this price range you can get a device from them as well secondly i feel that the front facing camera could have been a little better here with more details and crisper images which would have made it really good if front facing camera is your priority and the ultra wide angle camera shots can also be improved and made a bit more consistent and lastly the device here is somewhat bulky and not meant for those who have small hands or want a more comfortable device. And I would definitely recommend an S23 or some other device if you want the compactness. So this was my review of the OnePlus 12 and I feel this is a really well balanced device without any gimmicks but only if you can live with this software. So that's it for now and if you do end up liking this video make sure to press that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.